I am, I am absolutely honored to announce and introduce our last speaker. Last but not least, right? I had the pleasure of meeting Christine Comerford about a year and a half ago, okay? And I will summarize, it was at a conference, and I will summarize by saying that if you had seat belts attached to your seat, I would ask you to strap in for the ride that you are about to take. Um, it is quite a journey, and you have uh, Christine's bio in your book, but I thought it would be fun just to give you a couple of statistics to round out the amazing person that I have standing here next to me. So, Christine by the numbers, 700, that is the number of Fortune 1000 companies that Christine has worked with, 200, the number of startups Christine has invested in as a venture capitalist or as an angel investor, including Google. 40 to 210, the percentage increase of annual revenue or profit that companies enjoy when coaching with Christine. Five, the number of businesses she has built and sold with an average of 700% return on investment. Four, billionaires who have sought Christine's advice. Two presidents, both Clinton and Bush, have consulted with Christine. And then two, the number of New York Times bestsellers that Christine has authored. One of them she has graciously just given you, and when we're done today, she will be out there and you, she'll sign the, the book that you've been given, Smart, Smart Tribes. And lastly, five to 15, and that is the number of additional hours you'll get each week if you apply what you're about to learn from Christine today. So please give a warm welcome for Christine Comfort. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Today we're gonna to explore your awesome brain. And we are gonna talk about how to connect with people at the level of their subconscious mind. Now, um, I'm gonna kind of talk about the brain just a smidge, not totally getting geeky, so enough brain to apply the techniques. Then I'll talk about a couple of techniques, and then I'm gonna give you sort of a, a format to use to apply these techniques. I'll show you a couple of case studies, etc. We'll be doing labs throughout. This is super interactive. If you have a question, jump up and down. Wave me down if I don't see you. Ask the question right in the middle because I want to make sure that you keep staying in what's called your smart state, which we'll talk about in a sec. So since you will be buddying up, if you want to come forward, great. If you're comfy where you are, that's cool. You'll just need to find a buddy. And so let's make sure everybody has all the little things you're going to need. So you're going to need your deck because you'll be taking notes. You're going to need your worksheet. And then, of course, your copy of Smart Tribes for later. Everybody good? Okay, if you're missing anything, raise your hand and they will bring it to you. And um, let's go. Let's go. Question. Where would you like to have more influence? With what, this only works on humans. I've tried it on dogs, they don't totally respond. <laughs> so the techniques today are only for humans. So which humans would you like to have more influence with? Who would you like to have more influence with? Yes. Wife, yeah? Boss. Boss, boss, spouse, significant other, popular, yes? Who would you like? Hmm. Coworkers and kids. Maybe. Coworkers and kids. Okay, great. Who else? Children. Children. Prospects? Customers. Customers, prospects, boss, board of directors, financiers. Okay. Agency. Sorry? Agency. Agency, yes? Okay, awesome. Good, good, good. All right, so you know about me, so I'm not going to go into that, so yay. Okay, what matters is the techniques that I teach you today, I want you to be thinking about the ROI. In the appendix of Smart Tribes, we have all of the ROI numbers that our clients use. They don't use all of them, just certain clients use different ones. So later, when you go to whomever is the keeper of the budget, 
and you ask for budget to imply, apply some of these super groovy neuro techniques you're going to learn today, you might want to go into the appendix and figure out the metrics, the success metrics, because all this stuff is, even though it sounds cosmic, it is extremely tangible, measurable, and specific, which you will see shortly. Okay, cool. So, let's go. Thanks to Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, Harvard, NYU, Columbia, UCLA, we now know that 90%, 90% of our decisions are driven by our subconscious mind. 90%, whoa, does that surprise you? 90% of our decisions are driven and dominated by our subconscious mind? But we all thought that we were such intellectual powerhouses and we, we hone our intellects at the finest universities on the planet, and yet our intellects govern only 10% of our decisions and our behaviors. The pathways going from our emotional brain to our intellect are like a six-lane superhighway going in one direction. Woo! Lots of information coming from our emotional brain to our intellect. But the pathways going from our intellect to our emotional brain are like a little tiny single track trail poorly maintained in the forest. <laughs> so what does this mean? This means that we are highly emotional beings driven by deep subconscious programming. If we can understand how to be operating system compatible with the human that we want to connect with, we can, in essence, loop arms with someone subconsciously and walk forward to a mutually beneficial future. Mutually beneficial because otherwise you will use these tools for what? Evil, manipulation, <laughs> domination, and control. Thank you, my friend. Now is the time for the pinky swear. Please lift your pinky, whichever pinky you prefer. Uh, and just say, say after me silently, if you will. I agree. To use the techniques Christine will teach me today for good only <laughs> and not for evil. Okay? Thank you for the pinky swear. Okay, good. Yay. We all crave the experience of same as. People resist you because their creature brain is not experiencing you as same as them. If you're not the same as them, they cannot trust you. They will not go forward with you. Okay? Let's talk about these techniques. So the techniques I'm going to teach you today helped Bill Gates make Windows a world standard. We've been, these have been operating behind the scenes for decades. Helped Bill Clinton balance the budget. I was there. It took us two and a half years. We use these neuro techniques. Now, we're not going to talk about the budget now because it's depressing. But <laughs> you will remember that the US budget was balanced for a while. Okay? And then it helped all sorts of folks just like you get the results that you want. We use these techniques primarily in leadership if you want to enroll and engage people and get them to be more accountable and rise up and take on more responsibility. We use these techniques in culture, building that, thank God it's Monday culture, where your people are just vibrant and on fire. Would that be helpful to you? Yes. And then we use these in sales and marketing. Okay? Today we're going to mostly focus on sales and marketing, because okay? that's kind of what we're doing. All right, great. So what you're going to learn, two ways to use your 10%, your intellect, to enroll, engage, align with the 90%. We're going to go through our intellect to get to our emotional brain. Good. We're going to learn the three things that people crave, the three deep subterranean desires that humans have, where when you fulfill that hunger, they will go forward with you. And then my fave, as a former software engineer, I was an engineer at Microsoft and Apple back in the 80s at Microsoft, uh, early 90s at Apple. And that's when I really got, seriously, people are computers. You know, we are. You just have to make sure that you're software compatible. Okay, I know some of you guys are going, geek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I used to be a total geek, but I've had a makeover. So, <laughs> so the four most potent meta programs, the software, that determine if a person closed sales faster, enroll and engages people faster, writes marketing messages that deeply connect with people, doubles their revenue, etc. So let's go. Let's talk about your awesome brain. 
the three parts of your brain that we care most about in leadership and in influence are the following, the reptilian, mammalian, and then the neocortex, specifically the prefrontal cortex. Reptilian brain. The reptilian brain is a stimulus response machine coded for safety. The reptilian brain governs temperature regulation, breathing, balance. The reptilian brain has no concept of quality of life, no concept. The reptilian brain, if it could speak, it would say, am I dead or not? Basic, dead, not, binary, okay? Super simple. This is where our instincts, our impulses come from. That's important as a marketer. I'll show you how you're going to do that, use that in messaging in a moment. So reptilian brain, layered on top, mammalian brain. The mammalian brain is our emotional center. The mammalian brain is where we have fight, flight, freeze. The mammalian brain really just governs short-term memory primarily and emotions. If the mammalian brain it could speak, it would say friend or foe. Are we going to eat lunch or am I going to be lunch? Okay. Also, a stimulus response machine coded for safety. Still pretty basic stuff. Layered on top, cortex, neocortex, most evolved in human beings. Many animals don't even have a cortex. Our favorite part, prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is where we have innovation, creativity, collaboration, social skills, tool making, language, my favorite part about the prefrontal cortex is it enables us to say, I am here, but I want to be there. How am I going to get there? Okay, planning, envisioning a glorious future. I want you to always use, we call that in neuroscience, the desired state. This is the present state. It's where you are, the you are here. <laughs> the desired state is where you want to get to. Important to remember, where you are was once a desired state from where you were before, right? So it's all good, it's all evolution, but it's our job to engage the prefrontal cortex, show somebody the glorious future, and help them connect that with our product or service, okay? All right, when we are in tremendous stress, when we're going through lots of changes, unclear communication, constantly changing directives, et cetera, confusion, too many choices. We go into what we call critter state. Critter, because you're like a little animal. <laughs> and when you're in critter state, notice the prefrontal cortex is not available. It is offline. You are pure, raw, reptilian, mammalian. You are fight, flight, freeze, safe or not. Dead or not, and then should I fight? Should I get the heck out of Dodge? Or should I stand here and quiver? Okay, You're not going to buy there. You're going to stand there and quiver. Okay, a confused mind doesn't buy. A confused mind in critter state can't go forward and take initiative. Once we, when we work with companies and we coach and train them, one of the first things we do is massively reduce critter state because that's how we get 35 to 50% more productivity from somebody. We don't need to hire more bodies. We need to optimize the bodies we have, okay? So the tools we're gonna learn today, a few of them are gonna help you get into what we call smart state. Smart state, is when you have access to all parts. So in critter state, if somebody sends you a flame email, you have that physical reaction. What does it feel like when you're in critter state? That kind of uh, uh. Sorry? It sucks. It sucks. What does it feel like? What does it feel like? Tense. Tense. Warm maybe. Kind of uh, bad. Uh. Yeah. Or like uh, Yeah. Or uh, how fast can I run? When you're in critter state, your system is flooded with norepinephrine. You are drugged when you're in critter state. When you're in critter state, your whole system is flooded with norepinephrine so that you can run away from the saber-toothed tiger. We have no enzyme to break down norepinephrine in our bodies. All you can do is just wait or do some cardio. So seriously, that, which might be a little bit awkward to like bust into an aerobics class. So when someone's totally in critter state that reports to you, say, hey, let's walk. Get them walking and talking, because it at least will activate the cardiovascular system and start to get rid of the norepinephrine. Moving on. Smart state, when we're in smart state, we generally are enjoying a couple of different neurotransmitters. We're enjoying 
a burst of oxytocin because we feel connected. We're part of a tribe. We're going there together. It's cool. Oh, and we're going to a cool place. Dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Because we're seeing that cool place we want to go and we're actually starting to enjoy the benefits if we've made a very clear picture. If we've made a very clear picture of that glorious future, we then can start to activate the dopamine and people can start to enjoy getting there even though they haven't arrived yet. Now, grab your favorite hand. Let's model the brain. Whoops, let's not put that down there. Let's put it over here. So grab your favorite hand or your dominant hand if you like them both equally. Wrist, your wrist is your reptilian brain, brain stem, okay? Reptilian brain, palm, mammalian brain, okay? Fold your thumb in, limbic system, fight, flight, freeze, okay? Fold your fingers over, looks like a brain, cool, huh? Neocortex, prefrontal cortex, right behind your forehead. When you lose it, when you flip your lid, okay, you're in critter state, okay? <laughs> this is offline, you might notice, not available. Okay, critter state, smart state. All parts of the brain working together, yay. Ow, critter state, okay? When you teach this, you can put your hands down, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes people are like, no, okay. If you go into critter state, raise your hand and go, ah, and I'll help you get back into smart. We need to start looking at how we cause people to go into critter state and how we can bring them into smart state. And one of the best ways to do that is to help them connect and not feel alone and out there on the uh, savanna, okay, surrounded by scary things. So let me teach you one of the first two tools safety, belonging, and mattering. When we experience, write this down, safety plus belonging plus mattering equals trust. We want to build trust, safety plus belonging plus mattering. All right. You'll all remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is where we see the craving. Now, we're all fortunate to have our physiological meeting, need, needs met, right? Food, water, shelter, warmth. Once we have that, though, we have got to have safety in our culture. We need to know that we are safe to have ideas, to share our ideas, to take action. You know, We've got to feel like we are safe. On top of that, we've got to feel like we belong. We're part of the tribe. We have equal value. We're looping arms. We're going forward together somewhere cool that matters. And then beyond that, mattering. We've got to feel acknowledged and appreciated for our unique gifts. What does your customer crave? What does your prospect crave? What do your direct reports crave? What does the board crave? When you can start to decode what people crave, it will blow your mind at how much more effectively you can influence them. So let's look at how you can find that out, okay? When a person is craving safety but they're not getting it, okay, they will go into critter state. When they're in critter state and they're craving safety, they will take safety away. It's called identity coherence. Whatever we're experiencing inside, we need to make sure is happening outside or else we're kind of become straitjacket material, okay? So we're gonna make our outside, inside world be coherent, match, okay? So think about this. When you have somebody who is spreading gossip, rumors, fear, they are asking for safety, they're just in their critter state and they don't know how, okay? spreading gossip, rumor, fear, taking safety away from others, they don't have it themselves. Yes, this is deep and worth pondering. She's got a great pondering look on her face, yeah. Okay, let's layer on belonging. When someone is in critter state and they crave belonging, they separate, they form silos, they withhold information. Anybody know anybody who does that? That's somebody who is just in critter state and asking for belonging in the only way they can, okay? Mattering. When somebody craves mattering and they're not getting it, they will take mattering away. Uh, condescend, make people feel small, etc. Right? So it's very important for us to start to pay attention what people are actually asking for in their behavior. Let's do a quick group lab. Okay? Fight, flight, freeze. Somebody has the behavior of fight, flight, freeze. What might they be craving? Safety, belonging, or mattering? Safety. Safety, yeah, it's pretty primal, yeah. Dead or not, okay? Us versus them. There's you, there's me. Us versus them. Separation. Belonging, yes, 
okay? It is your job to find out what people crave and give it to them, okay? Victim complaining, whining, I have no power, nobody likes me, nobody appreciates me. Mattering. <laughs> Mattering, yep, yep. Okay, good, you guys are getting it. Perpetually seeking recognition, I unloaded the dishwasher. Yes! Could you now take out the garbage? <laughs> Recognition, what are they craving? Safety, belonging, or mattering? Mattering. Okay, now you're ready for the combo pack. Procrastination. Procrastination, someone has the behavior of procrastination? They're on your web page and they're not buying? Why aren't they buying? Okay, it's a combo. There's generally safety. What else might be connected to that? It's belonging or mattering. Often it's mattering first, okay? I don't feel safe, so I'm not going to take action. And mattering, is, is it really important? Do I really need to? And, and is it going to really make a difference? And, you know, am I going to feel better afterwards? And what if I don't do it right? Is it going to be good enough? And then now and then if it's a big scary risk, they look side to side and they go, heck no, no one's going with me, okay? So it's safety, it's mattering, and very rarely is there also plopped in belonging. Okay, good. Let's go on to something a little more complex now. So when we're, in, when we're trying to feed safety, belonging, and mattering to our clients, let's do a quick poll in the audience. So one of my stepsons, Spike, is always pulling people together. Yes, that's really his name. I didn't name him. I think it's cute, though. <laughs> I showed up later. <laughs> um, he's always bringing people together, organizing parties really big in his fraternity. His big thing is belonging. Thank you. My mom lives behind two security gates. They would add a third one if uh, she would add a third one if the homeowners association would let her. Very wealthy environment. What do you think? Safety. Thank you. Yeah. For me, if I felt like I wasn't making a difference, putting a dent in the universe, serving people, really just rocking my lifetime, you know, I would feel, yeah, I'd feel destroyed, mattering, thank you, yeah. Okay, so tell me, we're under the cone of silence. What do you crave most, safety? Where are the safety, how many crave safety? There's no right answer, thank you. Safety, belonging, how, how popular is belonging in the audience? How many of you guys crave belonging? Belonging, wanna be connected to others? Yeah, it's important, mattering? Wow, lots of matterers. Okay, think about your customer. What do you think your customer, just pick one customer off the top of your head. What do you think your product represents to people? Safety? Or some safeties, yeah. Does your product represent belonging, being connected, being part of a tribe, you know, being part of the Mini Cooper generation? Okay, and then mattering. Looking good, being special, being appreciated, standing out. Yes, okay, good, good. So safety in, in sales and marketing, we want to provide you know, guarantees, warranties, procedures, you know, templates, processes, a way for people to feel like they can succeed, have refunds, et cetera. Belonging, case studies, I'm part of the tribe, I see how I'm connected to others, okay? Mattering, I'm getting appreciated, I'm getting acknowledged. Some of our clients in the retail world send out valentines, digital valentines, to, to their um, customers. They love that. One of our clients actually sends out a assemble your own turkey. They do a direct mail spot and it's like thin cardboard and you can assemble a turkey. And then people take photos of that turkey. It has nothing to do with their business. It's just their Thanksgiving gift. Like they're not in the turkey business at all, okay? They're in the environmental business actually. And I'm like, why are you sending out paper? They're like, it's recycled. Anyway. <laughs> but then, they, then people go into their online community and put pictures of the turkey in different places. It builds community, it builds belonging, okay? Good. Let's look at a couple of more things. So service level agreements, our messages, testimonials, how we came through for somebody, online community, feeling of connection, identification. I'm the sort of person who drives a hybrid, you know, and just people start to stretch their identity and connect their identity to your product. Case studies, celebrations, contests, uh, success stories. You know, what are the ways that you have identified what your client craves and then how are you feeding that to them in your sales and marketing messages? Let's do a lab, okay? So I want you guys to do this and then we're gonna, we're gonna buddy up right now just so that it's a little bit easier. So we're gonna have buddies of two. You guys are gonna quietly, you can use your worksheet or you can use your handout. You're gonna list three people that you wanna increase your influence with. 
customer, prospect, key team member, boss, whomever, okay? Then you're gonna really think about what they crave, safety, belonging, or mattering. Then you're gonna write down why you think they crave that, okay? And then some messages that they might need to hear to give them that experience of safety, belonging, mattering, okay? Good, so you can have pods of two or three. Sometimes it's easier to have twos. You guys might be a three pod. You guys might be a two pod and a three pod here, two, two, that's easy, two, 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 okay? So just naturally the person near, the, near where you're sitting. So take a moment to quietly do it yourself, and then as soon as you're done, let's do a buddy share. All right, good. Come on back. Let's take a couple of shares. Let's take a couple of shares. Who wants to share first? Yes. You know, should we do microphone running? Yeah. You, can you just holler until, she, until they show up? I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'm a little under the weather. OK, then don't holler. Here she comes. So I started off with my boss saying that he's craving safety because he's new to the company, he's been here for about a year, and I think he has a, um, he's scared of failing. So as a result, he puts a lot of pressure on us because he wants everything to be perfect and he just, he wants to succeed in the company. So what could you give him to increase ex his experience of safety? <clears throat> um, a surety, I guess, making uh, a reassurance, letting him know that we're kind of like all on the same page. I don't know. I guess that's the part I'm struggling the with. Dashboards, status reports, what five things Updates. do you need to see each week to, so you can have visibility in the business? Right. Yeah. 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 I guess more transparency and kind of like what's going on. Transparency and accountability. Right. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. How about that? How about that homeowner? How about that homeowner? Uh, well, with the existing homeowner, I put um, uh, safety and belonging, just understanding that, you know, they're part of a community of homeowners. Uh, you know, our product assortment is, is made for them, and they can be safe with their purchases. Mm -hmm. And then how about the new one? For the existing homeowner, it's more, more safety because, you know, we're finding out, like, the new homeowner, they don't know what they don't know. So yes. make them feel included and, and understand, you know, we're here for you for whatever situation you're in. When you guys were just starting out and you bought your first home, what mattered most to you? Safety, belonging, or mattering? Safety. Yeah, it was, you know, it's, like, it's like when you have your, your, your first kid. It's like, oh, don't, don't break it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't want my house to fall apart. Yeah, yeah, so that's when you use those messages. Who has a different one? Who has a different one? Who has a belonging? Who has a mattering? Who has a belonging or mattering example? Yes. I've got a relatively new team member and so what I'm starting to see is that he's craving to belong with his peers, and I haven't facilitated that in terms of giving them a group project or things like that. It's always these two guys that are more traditionally media-based versus the new digital guy. So he's kind of on the outside, so I need to kind of pull them together. Cross-functional teams. Yes, cross-functional teams for 30, 60, 90 day sprints. Just bring them together for a short project. Huge. Um, we had a question. Your flash, fashion statement flipped. Ernest. Ernest said, but what happens about trust? So safety, belonging, and mattering together help us get trust. Trust is broken. Write this down. We break trust when we change our commitment. If we committed to do whatever 24-hour shipping and it shows up, you know, whatever, 32 hours later, we just broke a commitment. We have a trust issue. We have to resolve it. Okay, so when there's a breach of commitment, capability, or character, Okay, and let me just write trust breaches. Actually, I think it has, I can't remember if breaches has an E or an A. Anyway, um, so if we break a commitment, if we show that we really actually aren't capable, you know, to do this, then we're like, you said you were, Pff, you clearly aren't capable. But the worst one is character. You know, how many of you guys have, have experienced somebody that you thought you knew who a person was, and then it's like, you know, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde situation. You're like, whoa, who are you really? And you just like want to take a shower because you're so, ah, slimed. <laughs> yeah. When you have a character breach, it takes a long time to fix that. All right, good. Any questions on safety, belonging, mattering? This is safety, belonging, mattering, first level. I want you guys to keep working on this. How are we conveying safety, belonging, mattering? And I'm going to show you an example in a couple minutes when I layer on one more tool, okay? 
So the prospect must code you, the prospect, whoever you're selling to, marketing to, whether it's your boss or whoever, that prospect must code you in their creature brain, reptilian mammalian, as same as in order to buy whatever you're selling, whether it's an idea, initiative, or whatever, product or service, and the client must code you as same as to buy more. People come to us, why did my client stop buying? Well, let's look at what they crave and what you stopped giving them or what you never gave them enough of and they took a leap of faith and then they said, you know what, I'm not gonna get it here, I need to move on, okay? Okay, so stay with me on this one and let's look at the brain as we talk to it. The brain as we talk to it. So one of our clients had a webinar for healthcare prospects. Healthcare prospects. Crucial, here's their wording and their messages. We're gonna provide you crucial and controversial new legislation. Crucial and controver controversial. Crucial instinct. Do you see how the dead or not gets lit up by that? Okay, good. So reptilian, the reptilian brain, instinct. Ooh, it's crucial. I don't wanna die, I better be there. Okay, controversial. Oh, it's controversial. Like The Economist, I'm kind of intrigued. Okay, remember, The Economist does lots of controversial stuff in their marketing, you just saw it, right? Okay, check this out to ensure you know how to make the best choices. Now we're getting a little emotional. I wanna make the best choices, you know, but that also makes my brain happy too. If I make the best choices, I'll be loved, supported, etc. okay? To build trust with your community, be in good standing, don't be alone, be in a community, okay? Don't be an icky person who gets kicked out of the community, okay? Survive because you're trusted, okay? Whoops, wrong direction. Okay, what happened? 210 showed up. 77 prospects came out of it, took the offer. 32 of them became customers, okay? Throughout, we keep reinforcing their deepest subconscious needs. What has been the most effective method of punishment for centuries. Humans, death is easy compared to this. Isolation, Isolation excommunication, being kicked out of the tribe because you're no longer safe. You don't belong, we kicked you out. You don't matter, it was easy to kick you out, okay? Ow, 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 okay? Is this starting to drop in? Starting to drop in, good. Okay, let's go to the next level. All right, yay, okay, Mark Benioff likes it, good, let's go. Operating system incompatibility. How many of you guys have had a conversation with somebody and you can tell that they're glazing over? They're like, la, 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 la. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably very frequently, yeah. I was trying to get the United flight attendant and she was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> I need to get through to you. And I was like, oh, she needs some mattering, silly me. Lay on the mattering and suddenly all the free cocktails start to show up, okay. <laughs> This is stuff that people crave. This is like the sub-basement, okay? So now we're going even deeper, okay? Now we're going into the foundation. You know, we're going real deep. Okay, so here's an, whoops, here's an example. I gotta learn how to use their cool clicker here. The customer service rep, the customer service rep doesn't soothe the unhappy client and a social media rant goes viral. The client says, okay, I got a keyboard and I'm gonna use it. Okay, good. The VP of marketing aces all of those executive pitch meetings, but doesn't get the budget because she chokes again with the key stakeholder. We have to learn how to step into somebody else's world and be them to give the experience of same as. Product manager, creative director, clash. Impact crushes the time to market. If one of them just used these tools and became same as, they could kumbaya and move forward. Prospect doesn't feel same as. Oh, I, maybe I'm not part of your tribe. I'm gonna not buy. What if this worked? What if we used our next tool? The CSR powerfully connects with the client and a positive social media praise fest results. The VP of marketing gets the budget she wants and the stakeholder becomes her top champion. Product manager, creative director join forces and thrill the marketplace. And then of course the prospect feels that deep tribal connection, that identity, 
they buy, they tell all their friends, and they buy again. All right, let's talk about metaprograms. Metaprograms were discovered in the 1970s by Leslie Cameron Bandler. There are 60. It doesn't matter. Four is good enough. Don't go, don't go critter on me. Four is good enough. She's like, 60? We only have half an hour left. No, four. We're going to do four. Four is good enough to move the needle. The vast majority of our clients use safety, belonging, and mattering. They talk to the three parts of the brain. They use four or so metaprograms. That boosts their margin like crazy, like I'll show you. And then like six months later, nine months later, they come back to us. We teach them a few more once they've really ingrained them. So make it easy. Make it easy. Baby steps. Metaprograms operate on a range and a context. Not everybody's going to be at one end. Not everybody's going to be at the other end. People might be middle-ish, but resist the temptation. Resist the temptation to go in the middle. Lean a little bit one way or the other. It'll give you better messages. Second, they are contextual. You will have a set of metaprograms around purchasing products, around parenting, uh, around romantic love. Everybody has a set around money. Okay, so look at the context. So when you look at these, you might want to look at the context of your prospect, your customer, when they are buying from you or in their relationship with you, or what your product enables them to do in their life. We were working with a homewares company recently, and we did some really great campaigns so that the new market they wanted to bring in, that kind of upwardly mobile millennials, you know, the millennials, kind of, you know, Gen Y, upwardly mobile folks who kind of see themselves as more than just kind of hipsters. They actually want to make a bunch of money and, and you know, really be um, out there. We forged a campaign where people could craft this new identity with, frankly, what was a very stuffy brand. You know, but we had to send them to a different site and give them very different marketing messages. And management was pretty freaked out by it until they saw the numbers. Then they were happy. All right. So, you can use your little worksheet or you can use your, your notes. In the back of your little worksheet, can I use yours for a demo? Sure. There are cliff notes on the back of this two-pager. There are cliff notes back here, just in case when you're doing this, you're like, what was that earlier one? First one, tell me what I'm doing. Am I walking toward the back of the room or away from the front? Depends on your perspective, OK? <laughs> toward people are about getting, attaining, achieving. The toward prospect or customer wants to get, attain, achieve. They want to move forward. They want to, prov they, they want to get stuff, OK? Uh, Napoleon. Napoleon invades Russia with 475,000 troops, 475,000 human beings. He returns with 11,000 survivors. Yeah, over 450,000 people die. He takes the weekend off, and he starts recruiting for his next campaign, OK? Toward. <laughs> no concept of risk mitigation, not on the map, OK? Away. Away people want to prevent disaster. They want to mitigate risk. They want to solve problems. Why is somebody using your product or service? Are they trying to mitigate risk, solve problems, prevent disaster? Or are they trying to get, attain, achieve something? The toward person, if you're going to a movie, the toward person says, hey, I'll come by at 6.15 so we can be on time. The away person says, make sure you're here at 6.15. I don't want to be late. Same thing, different perspectives. Meta programs are like the lens through which you experience the world. They're actually those core motivators. It's what motivates somebody okay, at a deep subterranean level. Myers-Briggs, DISC, Caliper, that's the third level of the building. This is the sub-basement. This is way down there in the muck. Okay? All right, what's most important in your work? It's a great way to find out. Getting, attaining, achieving stuff, mitigating risk, avoiding disaster. Take a sec and write down what you are. And you might want to write down what a prospect is. What are you? This is Roger Bailey's research of the USA, USA workforce. 40% of us are toward, 40% are away, 20% are equal. What are you? What motivates you in whatever particular context you picked? And what motivates your customer? Why does your customer come to you? Do your messages say, get, attain, achieve? Get the stuff that you want in your life by buying our product? Or are your messages more like, avoid disaster, solve problems? prevent 
bad things, mitigate risk. How many of you guys are toward? How many of you guys are away? There's no right answer. How many of your customers or prospects are toward? Do you think people are coming to buy your stuff because they want to get a tan achieve? How many do you think your prospects are away? Mm-hmm. Okay. All of our clients, when they first work with us, they say, oh, I can't possibly do this. We have a gajillion, quadrillion different types of customers. So we get a flip chart, we spend a day, we start hammering this all out, and we find that every single one of our clients, at most, has four different profiles, four different mixes of meta programs. So we take a message, we tweak it in four different ways, we stick it on the server in what we call a message house, and over time, we look at what messages, what headline, that's the subject if it's an email, for instance, or the headline of an ad, for instance. What headline combined with what copy yielded what conversion? And then over time, you take the best headlines, you take the best copy, you Frankenstein them together, and you get some more messages. Okay, toward or way. Let's do the next one. Options, procedures, and we're going to stick them all together in messaging. Options. Options, people want lots of choice, lots of possibility. The world is their oyster. Procedures people want a step-by-step -step process. They speak in longer sentences. They want more of a story. Options people like the bullet points. Why'd you pick your car? Black, fast, good mileage. That's the options person. Why'd you pick your car? Oh, I was at my Aunt Sue's house, and she had this car that was kind of cool. So I took it for a test drive, and then I read about it online. Then I talked to my mechanic. Then I went to the dealer. Then I thought about it some more. And then I bought it. Okay? The end of the story is car. Okay? The question was, why'd you pick your car? Okay? When we work with car dealers, we will start the salesperson on a process. Hey, welcome to XYZ dealership. So I'm going to show you some cars. And we're going to talk about financing. Then we're going to talk about warranties. We're going to take a test drive. And then finally, we're going to fill out the paperwork. And then at the end, we're going to send you off into the car of your dreams. When you lay out a process for a procedural meta program, they are compelled, compelled is the key word, to finish the process. Now, what happens when the options person shows up and hears that spiel from the car dealer? They're like, seriously? And then the car seller says, oh my god, thank you. I can't stand that process. Let's get in some cars. Okay? <laughs> You have to serve both sometimes until you know, right? If it's a stranger walking in, you speak in both meta programs, you throw one meta program, program out, you see what happens, you shift to the other, okay? All right. What happens if an options person is selling to a procedures person? All these choice of possibility, but what happens? What's the experience? Where do they go? Elsewhere. Elsewhere? Yeah. They go into critter state first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then it's probably the flight part. Yeah takes yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Take a moment and write down what you are. I'm going to show you meta programs in action in just a couple minutes. In whatever context you picked, are you options or procedures? And then what's your customer? What's your customer or your prospect? Do they want lots of choice and possibility? Or do they want one of those websites or purchasing processes where it's a simple five-step proven process? I cannot tell you how often with certain types of purchasing situations we'll launch a yada yada proven process and people will just glom onto it. And you know what? They don't step out. Because if you know a procedures person, you all do, if they're stepping through a process in their head and you interrupt them, what happens? S go back to step one. Yeah. Do not PESCO. Do not get $200. Yeah. Go back to step one and start again. We do this with, I did this with one of our team members, and she's like, you're interrupting my process. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to go back to step one. I'm like, oh, yeah, shh. Shut up, Christine. OK, how many of you guys are options? How many are options? Procedures? Do, do, do. How about your prospect or customer? Options? Do they want options? You think they want options? Do they want procedures? 
Remember the context. Remember the context too. They might want options when they're buying stuff, when they're picking and looking, and they might want procedures when it's the easy schmeasy three-step checkout. Yeah. Okay? Amazon, great example. Here's all sorts of stuff. We're going to give you a pretty easy way to search for what you want, and then we're done. One click shopping. Have done with it. Okay? Good. 40, 40, 20 is the USA workforce. Okay? Let's get to the good stuff. Two more, and then we're going to get to actually how you do this. General specific. This one's super easy. General people, high level, net, net, forest at the high level. Specific trees. How many trees are in the forest? What kind of bark do they have? How many leaves do they have? Are they brightly colored? Okay. Now, the general person, how was your weekend? You guys have had this experience. How was your weekend? Great. Move on. New topic. Okay. <laughs> Specific person, how was your weekend? Oh, we made potato salad. It's a 30-year-old recipe. You have to boil the potatoes for about an hour. Then you let them sit overnight. You're just like, okay, it was a good weekend. Yay, like you're chewing your arm off to get out of the trap, OK? So watch out as to whether you have a general or a specific person. Because 60% eek of the USA workforce is general. 60, whoa. Make sure the accountants aren't here, OK? Your books basically balance. Yeah. Specificity. We can't always in the pick, pack, ship department where we sometimes have problems. People are picking, packing, shipping the wrong stuff, right? We can't always have super specific stuff, people there, you know? I urge you to recruit based on meta programs. You'll be a lot happier. You'll have much better retention, et cetera. If you don't yet, you know, this is where we use lots of procedures and stuff, but we actually give a process to our clients so that they just recruit for meta programs. It just saves time and, and heartache. So, General, specific, super clear. Okay, jot down. How many of you guys are general? How many are general? How many of you guys are specific in the context you picked? Customers. How many of your customers are general? Give me the high level. I'll click through if I care about the deets. And then how many are specific? A little more specific. Okay, okay, good. Let's do one more, and then we're going to combine them. All right, active reflective. Active reflective. Nike's Just Do It campaign is targeted to people with an active meta program. It's not, oh, just think about it, <laughs> consider it, do some analysis, and then eventually maybe you'll do it. Okay, no, that would be the reflective. So active people, high bias to action, high bias to action, okay? Very short sentence structure. Yes, often you will get a toward and an active person together, you know? Let's eat. Okay, well, I'm thinking about having lunch, but I wasn't sure if we should have like fajitas or, oh, Mexican, I don't know, I had Mexican yesterday. Maybe we should have some, some fish instead, but, oh, sushi though, sometimes I get a tummy ache. You know, you're just like, let's eat. Okay, so active or reflective. The active person, make it really easy or they will abandon and move on. The reflective person, Give them what they need to consider, to ponder, to understand, to analyze. The active person, you need to grab their ankle sometimes, pull them down to earth and slow them down because active people sometimes make hasty decisions that then we have to clean the mess up. Reflective people sometimes take too long. Oh, I am so psyched to get the final version of the budget Tuesday at 9 a.m. Woo, Tuesday at 9 a.m., final budget, woo, okay? The reflective person needs to get that so it sinks in. How many of you guys, in the context you picked, are active. Active, reflective, there's no right or wrong answer, be not shy. Uh, your, your customer or prospect, active, reflective. Okay, great. All right, now let's look at how we put this stuff together. I'm going to show you a leadership example, then I'm going to show you some marketing examples, okay? Then I'm going to show you some ads. CEO comes to us and says, my CFO is making me crazy. I think I need to let her go. I was really bummed because she was a really good hire. It took forever to find her. I did not want to lose her. But here's what was happening. He was toward get, attain, achieve, options, choice, possibility, general, just net it out for me, simple, simple, and then let's go. Here's her communication to him. Whoops. Here's her communication to him. Tell me which meta programs are being used. You tell me now. I've been considering 
our costs. What is that? Reflective considering, contemplating navels, our costs. Our costs. Away. OK, I've been considering our costs. I think we could save 20% or more. Is that vague and ambiguous? How much could we save? Specific. Thank you. Good. Save, not get, away and specific. Good. Keep, keep playing with me here. OK, we need to analyze reflective. reflective, our alternative sourcing, manufacturing, distribution, because I'm concerned we're overspending. Away, yes. And sourcing um, by at least 35 grand. Specific, good, good, good. And I'm thinking through the best process as I procedures, OK? OK. <laughs> the best process to find the most cost effective away alternative. OK. All right. I have, I'm sorry I'm such a spouse with this clicker. OK. OK, yes, so she was a reflective away specific procedures. Whoa, what's the CEO experiencing? When did we lose the CEO? The f at the first considering? <laughs> I've been considering la, 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 la. Yeah, so he's coming to me saying, we've got to get rid of her. She's not, she's not what? What's he experiencing her as? Not, not same as, gold star, not same as. There's nothing logical here, OK? She's great at her job. She's just losing credibility with every communication. So I said, give her to me. I can make her better and stronger. <laughs> Here's what she says now. Tell me what's happening. I want to speak with you about our goal to not just double revenue this year, to award, <laughs> but also to increase profitability. Just in case we didn't get it, that was some more toward, OK? I think I have a little, whoops, I have a little cheat sheet for you too here. OK, good. Yes, toward, good. Um, I have some cost-cutting options, OK? I'd like to propose. Active. Are you interested? OK. It's all really general. He's like, oh. God, she used to be so draining and needy. Now she totally saves me time. I'm like, oh, isn't that great? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And now he said, you know what? I think that's one of the best hires I've ever made. I'm like, you were right, George. She was a good hire. I think I'm going to promote her to president. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Okay. He just needed same as, just like you and your prospects. They need same as. Okay. Here's what I want. I want to stress that when we talk to our people inside of our company, we get them to increase their desire to step up. Every brain needs insights. Brains need insights. We need to cause insights in our people's brains if we want them to be enrolled and engaged. And every brain needs to aspire. OK? Insights and inspire, aspire, aspire, see what's next. Client comes to us and says, no one's buying our outsourced services. I can't figure out why. Well, what their ads basically say, beneath it all, they're assuming that, they're, that their client is, wants to design their own destiny, wants to have lots of options and possibilities, wants to get the net-net, high-level executive summary, wants to take rapid action. Their prospect is a mid-level financial executive at a Fortune 1000 firm. Why isn't this working? What do you think? Is this? Do you think the profile of a mid-level financial executive at a Fortune 1000 firm? No, it's not. That's what they get 100 unqualified leads a month. Here's who their customer is. Solve problems the right way. Assess the situation carefully. 40 years of experience. Reliable procedures. Proven seven-step process. Monthly detailed report. Critical success factors. We're finance professionals. Now we're layering. What does their prospect crave? Safety, belonging, or mattering? Safety. Safe, 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 safe. But we're adding a little kicker at the end. What is it? We're adding either belonging or mattering. Tell me what we're adding and where. Safe, 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 pow. Where? Thank you, yes, woo. We're finance professionals. 
We're like you. Let's loop arms and go somewhere cool together. We're buddies. I know your pain. OK, yeah. 210 qualified leads. Woo, now we're talking. Closing sales 48% faster, harvesting more. OK, now we're getting somewhere. All right. Client comes to us and says, wow, we're sending a lot of emails. Look at this blue bar. Oh, and there's Zumba, but I can't go. That's so sad. <laughs> or do you say Zumba? Is it Zumba or Zumba? Zumba. I never got that right. Ooh, sorry. No, you're fine. Now it's getting really personal. OK. Kara will do a demo later. <laughs> All right. So our client says, we're sending gobs of emails. Look at the vertical blue bar. We're sending gobs of emails, OK? And the only time we get a response is when we do a price slashing message, circle slash. We don't like price slashing messages. We don't differentiate on price. We differentiate on the customer experience, et cetera. So that's the only time that they've gotten a good response. And we said, well, let's not have all this chopped liver and also crabby people with all these emails we're spamming. Let's send very few emails and get really high open and clicks. So let's use the meta programs, and that's what we got. Look at the little smidgen. Little smidgen of emails, massive response. Please try using meta programs. It's just good for business. Just, it's going to be a little weird. It takes about 90 days, I find, when our clients get first to this and we help them with the first few messages and stuff, then they're off to the races. It's going to take about 90 days for you guys to really get this in your DNA. But I mean, 90 days, that's nothing, OK? Let's look at another example. Oh, you know what? Maybe the little thingy is, is crabby now after the whole Zumba thing. Let's see if we can put it over here. Go like that, maybe? Yeah. OK, good. All right, I'm going to show you another quick example. So here are the profiles of these. Our customers like to put their prospects and customers into profiles and then call them something. OK, so these are two. This is a blended uh, series of ads for the creators and the contributors. So they want mattering. OK, the creator really craves mattering. We understand how important X, Y, Z is to you. Belonging is the contributor. We're like you. We felt your pain. We're in this together. Okay. Collectively, they are toward options, general, and active. Okay. Check out what happened. This is a company that took six months to get 2,000 people into their community. Okay. And I said that's way too slow. We don't have time for that. Let's please change that. Okay. So here's what happened. Your passion is law, not marketing. Okay? Ask legal insiders. Meld business practice. Connect to complement your strengths and your goals. Do you feel all the mattering happening in there and all the forward? Okay? And we have girls and boys and all sorts of good diversity. Okay, here's the girl version. You want to go further. So we split tested. We split tested the messages. Step off the path. Discover the like minded. Seek your answers. Okay? You can see all the wording in there. Okay? The boy version of it. Okay? The older dude version of it, OK? <laughs> Solutions you seek are outside the box. You have to have the boys and the girls and the young and the old, you know? Oh, and here's another girl. This is the smart girl version. Smart girl, conservative with the glasses on, OK? <laughs> career, you know, hey, it's about your career and going forward, OK? Here's what happened. Here's what I care about. What I care about is they had their vision. They went from here, which took them six months, and they got this in a month. And now they're at 4,000. Now they're at, well, a little bit over 4,000, but 4,000 as of about a month ago. We need to talk to people in their language. We talk to people in their language, and they get it. Okay. All right. I want you guys to start to look at how can we talk to our people in their language so profoundly that subconsciously they can remove their resistance, they can loop arms with us, and they can go forward. Right? So let's take a sec. How long can we spend on this lad? lab? I know we started like 15, 20 minutes late. OK, so let's take a sec. It'll take longer than a sec. Um, let's take longer than a sec to do this lab. I want you guys to look at this, and then I'm going to give you the little road map that we're going to use, and then we're going to wrap it up. So what are the meta programs of the person that you most want to influence? Now, you can choose. Maybe you have four or five different customer profiles. Choose one of those customer profiles. Let's do this for your customers, OK? In the context of buying from you, 
what are their meta programs? Pick that particular profile. What do they want most? What do they crave most so that our marketing messages can give them what they crave? We want them to start to forge getting emotional subterranean needs met and you. We want that connection to start to form. Okay. What behavior would you like them to inspire or change? Buy more often, buy faster, refer their friends, become tribal spokespeople, whatever. What we'll do. Oh, this is great. Can I borrow this for a sec? This is great. So X's were for him and O's were for the person he wants to influence. It's fun to see how different you are because guess what? This is the harsh part about aging, isn't it? We think it's about us and it never is. Oh, like you hit 40. Oh, it never was about me. I thought it was. You, know? <laughs> you hit 50 and you're like, ah, who cares? You know? <laughs> Yeah, the 50-year-olds are like, I hear you, sister. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're learning who that person is. We're really looking at who that person is so we can step into their world and actually be them, speak to them as them so we can go forward together. You can't speak in metaprograms all the time. You'd be some weird metaprogram spewing robot thing, okay? It would be bad. You just want to use these tools when you want to influence a new behavior, when you want to enroll and engage somebody powerfully. Let's come back and let's, do, let's share a couple of examples. Oh, I didn't teach you the heartbeat clap. I don't need to teach you. For the future, next time we work together, it goes like this. Like a heartbeat, you know? It's a good way to bring people back because, you know, if they're just like blah, 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 you know, you just start doing that and suddenly everyone starts doing it. You've got the swarm. It's totally cool. But you guys were just like, yeah, we're done. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna do two quick. Uh, we're gonna do two case study shares and ask a gajillion, quadrillion questions. Don't worry, they won't ask. Don't go. Don't. Don't. She was like, ah. no. You can ask questions of me. Kathleen will be sharing. Thank you for sharing, Kathleen. Tell us what you learned and hold it like an ice cream cone. Okay. So the, it, let's start with number three. I was trying to sell a project to the head of my department. So, and he has um, a history of not making quick country, concrete decisions when we send him things. Right? Exactly. So, this so is, his, yeah, so right? his meta program doesn't make, doesn't make, so makes slower. Well, I'm not sure it's his meta program or how we're talking to him. So okay. I, <laughs> when we work together, so we both agree that he is toward Options, general, and active. Yeah. That is not my natural inclination. So this is what I wrote for him to sell him. The, and, he, and he needs mattering in terms of belong, um, what he wants most. So this is the email that I would send him to, to sell this project. We've determined that an event-based insertion strategy is feasible using this vendor technology. The program will provide numerous options that can be easily executed to support your strategies. The annual cost is X, and we can accommodate that in the budget. Are you interested? So I try to stay very active and towards, in terms of the beginning, we've determined that event-based marketing insertion is, is feasible. So it's very towards. Uh, pro program provides options. He likes options. Supports his strategy, broad and mattering. Um, got specific on the cost, which is, you know, he's a little bit more general, but I, then I swung it back general saying, we can accommodate in the budget. I didn't tell him how I was going to do it, but I can accommodate it. So he has to, he doesn't have to worry about that. And then I just put it in his court. Great. Couple of quick things. Write these down. When we do a message, it's really nice to first kind of, you know, Launch and enroll, if you will. Oh, here, I'll make, the, I'll make the procedural people happy. Step one, launch and enroll. <laughs> I'll show you to do that in a second, <laughs> OK? Then we make the offer, OK, whatever we're offering them to agree to, right? And then we have the call to action, OK? So separate sheet over here. I was going to go over identity, but maybe we'll do that later, or we won't do it. Four influencing phrases. 
If you drop one of these influencing phrases, sometimes two, into a metaprogram-based message, kapow. Okay? These drop right in. Influencing phrases. Okay. Number one, I need your help. I need your help. It's called a dom sub swap. The dominant person becomes subordinate, the subordinate person becomes big. Use it with a kid. It's the best example to use it for the kid. They'll go, oh, you do? Wow, I need your help, Bobby. Oh, you do? Okay. When we get older, we're like way too cool to puff up, but we're puffing up inside. You know? I mean, Clinton, you know, used it on me. I helped him for two and a half years for free. <sighs> totally worked. Okay. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, you're using an influencing phrase. And he's like, I know. I'm like, <sighs> two and a half years later. Anyway, okay. I need your help. Dom sub swap. It's great when you want somebody to rise up. You don't need to be the dominant person. You're just trying to get somebody. I use this whenever I want our team to rise up in leadership. Wow, I really need your help here. You know, I can't do it without you. Lay on the mattering, the safety, the belonging. Beautiful thing. What if? How often have you had an idea and you threw an idea out and you came back a week later and your team is like executing it? And it was just an idea, it wasn't a directive. You're like, what have I done? Okay, what if is a great way to kind of throw a beach ball out into the concert and then you can't touch it again? Okay, you go, what if, don't touch it, let them bat it around and make their idea. This one powerfully engages and enrolls and remo removes ego and emotion. Your ego, your emotion, just left the building when you do the what if, okay? What if, what if, <laughs> here comes some, a proposal to you guys, what if they are in either critter state or you're just trying to kind of get stuff moving, okay? If they're in critter and you need to get them off the ledge or if you just need to get some momentum, would it be helpful if? Here's what happens about every, meh, anywhere between three and six weeks. We get a phone call, it's always the same. We go into a client, and we've been in, we've, we, was, we were at the client many, many months ago. We did training for their salespeople. They all are blowing their quotas out the door now. And then the head of sales says, let's raise quotas. Salespeople go, ah, just when I nailed it, you raised it, ah. And they always say, call Christine's firm. They'll teach you some neuro tools and it'll be fine, you know? So they call us going, ah. The first thing we say is, hey, would it be helpful if, always be curious, always be curious. Never be irritated because people are cute. People are totally cute. Always be curious and then appreciate that they have a map of the world which is different than your map of the world. So get on theirs by appreciating, okay? So would it be, hey, would it be helpful if we looked at your quota? No, that's a bad idea. Well, would it be helpful if we looked at your pipeline and then we looked at the key influencers in the market and then, can you tell what I'm doing? We're pulling them from critter state amygdala hijack into problem solving prefrontal cortex. You can actually see their eyes change. It's the coolest thing ever. Hey, would it be helpful if, think of, you guys remember Columbo? Those of you who are older, yeah, Columbo, awesome. Great character, You're always kind of curious. And, ah, it might be a goofy idea, but I don't know. Would it be helpful if, blah, blah, okay? Would it be helpful if, is a beautiful thing. Do don't need the raincoat. <laughs> and then the fourth one is, can you help me understand? When someone says, hey, Let's spend $10 so we can make $1. Gosh, can you help me understand how that might work, you know, et cetera, okay? If you don't get it, or can you help me understand how, how exactly we're gonna launch this marketing campaign? Because you don't get it and you don't wanna freak them out. Can you help me understand gets you the info without sending them into critter, okay? Can you help me understand? Okay, good, yay, thank you. Let's clap for, for Kathleen. Yay, yay. OK, we're going to do one more. Trevor, tell us your situation. Sure. So uh, we were talking about uh, you know, my customers. And um, you know, when we started to take a look and, and characterize them, you know, the, the big things that we were taking a look at were uh, you could pretty safely characterize the, you know, a lot of the core customers as you know, leaning away, uh, very procedurally based. and. Um, I think maybe a little counter, but uh, act, action based as well. Uh, uh -huh. So, well, craving safety at the same time. And I was really taking a look at it in terms of um, the way we're presenting our products, whether it's in the catalog or on our site. 
um, and some of the opportunities that we have there. And so um, one of the conversations that I think is uh, you know, a good one to, to take back is if you look at some of the, the way we assort, especially our, our very broad, some of our most successful products, it, it can be an eye chart when you toss in sizes and different types and color exceptions. It is one of those things that you don't necessarily feel safe. It can, you have so many choices. It's not a process. It's, it's just all there, and you've got to figure it out yourself. Um, so I think that's something that you can, you, know, you can walk the customer towards. At the same time, once, you, once we get our customer onto the product page, everything starts to, to fit together nicely. Um, you have a process in place. Everything's numbered through our checkout. It, it gives you that, that sense of, I've been here before, I've done this, it's a safe environment. Um, it's tough, I think, to characterize our folks, whether they're general or specific, but I think we're able to go general. Um, if you've tried to use our, our checkout, it expands if you want to take a look at your payment information, but if you've done it before and you're good with it, just let it go and hit the checkout button and you're, you're done in two clicks. Um, if you want to call our call center, you can, you, know, you can go through all of the details or you could be done in a second. Um, and so in thinking about it in that context, it, it seemed to align uh, pretty well, but you know, there's definitely that opportunity to, to say, you know, how do we reinforce the, the safety, eliminating as many of the, the choices and decision points or, or laying it out more procedurally for them um, in the areas we've already seen work, so. Yeah. Yay. So I'm curious, how many of you are, are entering a new market or trying to take on a new type of prospect? Like the example we had earlier. Yeah, so Bon Tom, yeah, yeah, you want to get some younger people, whatever. Okay, who else? Okay, so what's, and so what's the difference that you want to add? What, what's the new profile you want to add? Tell us who they are. Yeah, so I think uh, not unlike Bonton, we're looking at uh, younger customers. We're launching new lines and investing in uh, smaller lines that have growth potential. Uh, so very much along the same lines. How about you guys? You, were you guys going for somebody new? We're kind of in the innovation space, so we're, we're putting out like pilots of brand new products we don't know whether it's going to work or not, and sometimes to brand new customer sets. Awesome, awesome. Who else is going for a new type of customer? How would you describe them? Um, younger, um, probably more wanting to belong, you know, pursuing them more through social media, you know, feeling like you know, they're part of a community, like a health community. Okay, that, thank you for, for just saying that. Social media, what core needs is it filling? Safety, belonging, mattering. What do you get for belonging and mattering? Yes, yes, you're, visual, you're visible now, you have a voice. And there's a zillion different, what, tribes you can join. Yes, good, good. Who else is looking for a new type of customer? Anybody else is kind of taking on a new profile? A new, yes. Older customer. You got, yeah, you guys can combine. And <laughs> tell us a smidge about that older customer. Well, our customer is very diverse, but it's 18 to 34. Uh -huh. So basically, after the age of 34, no one wants to build their own furniture. <laughs> <laughs> And they, want, <laughs> and they want delivery, and they want service, and they want all those things, and we're a pick pack, basically, environment. Great. So you're adding new services, or you're adding new messages? We're at, doing both, uh -huh. and we're opening in multiple countries with the cool. same type of thing. Cool, cool, cool. Great. Um, in Chapter 7 of Smart Tribes, make, sure, make a note to, to read Chapter 2. If you can't read the whole book because you're too active or whatever. And if you are, read it on the treadmill. Oh, yeah, active people read it on the treadmill or get the audiobook or something. So Chapter 2 and Chapter 7. 2 goes over safety, belonging, mattering. 7 goes over meta programs. 6, six goes over the addition, some additional types of rapport. Body, posture, gesture, um, kinesthetic. Um, auditory, etc. Okay, the, all this stuff together kind of turbo char charges it. Okay, do you guys get it? Do you get kind of phase one of this? Let me tell you how this is going to work. When you want to change somebody's behavior, if it's in a leadership scenario, it's going to take one to three meta program based messages to get them to shift their behavior. One to three. Okay, if they're a person who doesn't quite get stuff until they see it written down, follow up that conversation with an email where you reiterate the message. If they're a visual, if they're an auditory person who doesn't really understand it, things until it's explained a few times, follow it up with a voicemail. Okay? If they're a kinesthetic person, if you can just say, that was a great meeting. That was a great meeting. Okay? <laughs> you can only touch on the arm, right? Or the back, because otherwise it's a harassment suit. So be careful where you touch people. 
We want this to land in. When you read chapter six, I want you to start doing the body posture gesture to give a deeper experience of same as. All right, questions on what we've gone over so far? Questions on what we've gone over so far before I show you the map? Bueno. Oh, question, yes, sir. When you're, sorry. When you're crafting these messages, and we were kind of talking about it in our small buddy group here, to a certain extent, is it okay to realize that even though you're trying to influence somebody, you're also kind of trying to get some of your own, I guess, needs met, if you will. So, like being a reflective person, I want, I'm trying to get my boss to the place, for example, where he'll give me more detail and allow me to kind of get more detail from him about what he's really thinking. But I realize I have to message it because he's on the opposite end of the spectrum and at a high level. So, okay. That makes sense. Douglas is saying, but what about me? <laughs> Stepping onto his map, when do, when do I get snacks? <laughs> All right, so here's an awesome thing to do. So say that he's super active, okay, and you're super reflective, just to make that easy. So you're gonna step into his map of the world, you're gonna speak his language, and if he's like towards the inactive, you know, you know, I've been thinking about, which is a reflective thing to say, but um, I really wanna be the best yada yada. If he's a matterer, I want to be the best direct report, the best product manager blah, 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 that you've ever had. So, you know, could you, you know, could you brainstorm with me some ways that I could then, you know, grow and stretch because I'd really like to be able to reflect on those. So you can ask him for what you need only if it's going to fulfill his goal and get him in action. Does that make sense? Don't deny your own needs, but say them in his words and it's going to work a lot better okay I'm fairly active as you guys can probably figure out I work with a bunch of really reflective people you know and they'll often now say permission to reflect and I'll go yes right sorry don't tell me in 10 minutes tell me in two days you know you know really I have some friends who like I'll ask them a question and they'll just be silent and I'll be like hello you know and now they go processing and I'll go oh great okay I'll wash the car I'll go get the movie tickets and then I'll come back and you'll be ready you know, and like now we have jokes about it, you know, <laughs> or I make a decision and they go, are you sure? You know, do you want to rethink that decision for just a second? I'm like, why? Well, did you consider blah and blah and blah? I'm like, oh, thank you for reflecting on my decision. I did not. Correction on decision. Okay. Make it fun. This isn't like weird and freaky. You know, this is just how the brain works, you know, and I have had people get mad at me saying, you're speaking in meta programs. And I go, doesn't it feel good though? And they're like, yeah, it does. Okay. I like you again. Okay. So we all do it with each other. We're just trying to have that same as rapport experience. Okay. Other questions? Oh, I don't need to talk in this. I've got this. Um, other questions? Let's just do the little map then. And then it's time to go. Boink. Boink. Okay. Buyer's journey, marketer's opportunity, seller's compass, whatever your f favorite term is. Um, the way I experience this is that we just want to reach people, you know, build awareness using paid media and earned media so that we drive them to owned media. That's just my experience. Tell me if yours is different. We then want to very quickly get interaction. We want them to take the call to action, you know, to take the phone call, etc. What a lot of our clients do, depending on what you're selling, you know, this isn't totally a catalog-y approach, but a lot of our clients um, we'll, we'll use all sorts of different media, omni-channel approach, to get them to do one thing, which is to get on the phone for 15 minutes. Uh, when they get on and they, they take that 15-minute strategy call or whatever, it's scripted, it's with meta programs, it's a beautiful thing. And after that 15 minutes, the majority of them, we get pretty good, about 70%, will either, will either make their first little baby purchase or they'll agree to a big long call, an hour long call, a results call or whatever fancy thing we call it, which is a richer script, you know, where a deeper thing is being sold. So look at however your experience is, okay? When you, if you sell something, catalog online, whatever, make sure that your thank you message reinforces. Make sure that you're always constantly reinforcing. So follow the path that works for you guys but keep weaving these messages in, okay? So whatever it is, download a resource, request a call, opt in, join a tribe, okay? Then convert, convert them, you know, buy something, and then engage. What we wanna actually do with people 
is we want to get them to connect us to their identity. Okay? So their identity and us, we're all in this together. Okay? This is from Bateson's Logical Levels of Change. This is how human beings change. We can change their environment, which is a very subtle kind of superficial change. This is, uh, I cover change and change management in chapter nine, okay? We can change their behavior, okay? That gets interesting. Give them more skills, but where the juice really is, is when we change their beliefs about the world. Their beliefs about the world enables them to be bigger. When a product changes a person's beliefs about the world, you can now sleep safely at night, you know? you'll now be seen for the valuable person you are, okay? We change their beliefs about the world, we change their beliefs about their, themselves, that's called identity, okay? If we, can in, if we can nurture and protect and expand a person's identity, they'll be profoundly brand loyal. Make sense? Okay, so this is a little bit of a geeky chart. Um, the, the green boxes up is the neuro stuff. Green boxes up is the neuro. The stuff down here is, you know, good old execution. How many of you guys are using storytelling? How many of you guys are using really rich storytelling? Okay, do you guys want any, do you guys want a resource for that? Like a little kind of step-by-step -step neuro resource? Should I send you one? Would that be helpful? No, I don't want it. You want it? Okay. Um, this is the part where we make my to-do list. Okay, so you want the storytelling. Uh, storytelling resource. Good. Everything that I'm going to send you is going to be digital. Um, and just uh, put your business card up here later if you want it. Um, okay, so thought leadership. Establishing a thought leadership, blog, social media. You know, all of our clients, we train them with what, if they write one thing, they have to repurpose it at least six times. Okay? So what's happening across the top is we're managing the emotional state. We're managing the emotional state. Okay, so jot that down here. I need to add more words to this, but it's kind of getting gross already. So we're getting them, them to be curious. We want to first make them curious. Then we want to make them empowered. Hey, there is a better way. You get to sketch out their desired state for that, okay? Assess their present state. Give them an opportunity to create some insights. What would you like? What would you like? Three questions to get somebody to start thinking. What would you like? Hey, what would you like? Ah, what would having that do for you? What would having that do for you? I'm going to write this down. This is important. Outcome frame. It's one of my favorite neuro tools. Use this all over the place. What would you like? Something that you can create and maintain. Something that you can create and maintain. It's not, I would like a gajillion, quadrillion dollars. No. What, so, something that you can create and maintain. I'd like to feel safer at home. I would like to feel prettier when I go out on the weekends. I would like to have more uh, strategic time. What would you like? What would hypnotic language you like? We're designing a desired state. What would you like? Imagine what you would like. Oh, it's pretty here. Okay, good. Now? What will, what will having that do for you? That do for you. Somebody tell me what just happened. What would you like, what will having that do for you? Action happened, what else happened? Inserted from uh, the possibility into the present and brought that possibility forward to us. Thank you, we brought the possibility forward. Do you guys get it? What would you like? Oh, I want this. What will have that do for you? Oh, let me just settle in. Mm -mm. Ooh, me likey here. Okay, yes. What will have that do for you? Okay, now the next one. How will, see we're on the will track now, because we're there. What will having that do for you? Um, actually, let's just say, um, okay, wait, this is, uh, I'm being a spaz. What would you like? What will have that do for you? How will you know when you have it? I was on the right track. How will you know when you have it? Proof. How will you know when you have it? The, back to the, I want to feel pretty on weekends, okay? 
Well, I want to feel pretty all the time, but they might want to feel more pretty on weekends when they go out. <laughs> People will tell me, you know? How will you know when you have it? So, what's the desire state? What's the benefit and the feeling attached to it? What's the proof and criteria that you know that you got it? Okay. Now, it goes on the outcome frame. I write about it in Smart Tribes. I give you really good examples, like 13 questions. It's super long. But this is the first way to start it. This is the easiest version of the outcome frame. Okay. Subsequent questions are, what a value might you risk or lose? What a value might you risk or lose to get it? What a value might you risk or lose? Okay. I want more free time. What will I have to do for you? I'll feel better. I'll feel more energized, et cetera. Oh, cool. How will you know when you have it? When I've got five hours each week to strategize or whatever. Okay, cool. Um, what value might you risk or lose? Might have to give up some control. Might have to trust people more. Might have to hand off more work, et cetera. Yeah. That's usually when people go, <sighs> it's called an ecology check. Is it okay with the person's identity for them to have it? Okay, that's enough neuro for today. Let me get into the, back to the chart. Okay, so we are helping people feel empowered and commit to change. Okay, we're doing this with insights, outcome frame, assessing their present state. Ooh, this isn't what I want. I want that. And remember, instinct, reptilian, emotional, mammalian, logical, intellectual, okay, prefrontal cortex. These tools help you do this. Good. Now, metaprogram profiles. Factor those babies in, okay? Safety, belonging, mattering, trigger. Which one's most prevalent? Outcome frame, you just learned it, okay? Solution, knowledge, factor that stuff in. Now they're feeling more empowered. Here comes the same as, pop. They're not gonna explore solutions with you unless they experience a degree of same as. The stronger the same as, the more aspiration, the more they in aspire to that desired state, okay? Then we get the urgency. Ooh, I gotta do it now. I feel all same asy. Get out the checkbook, okay? Um, we don't have time to go. We don't have time to go over perceptual positions um, and multiple SPM triggers. But and then ultimately, we want the satisfying, the kind of feeling of having begun, and solution confidence. Make them a tribal spokesperson because now their identity is forged with us. So we're in this together. It's personal, and then shared identity, etc. Okay. So. This is sort of the process that we go through as we bring all these concepts and we apply them. We bring these process, processes and these uh, tools and concepts down to earth. Okay, good. All right, let's wrap it up. So the thing that, that I want you to get is that you'll start out with meta programs. You'll start out with safety, belonging, mattering. Maybe just pick safety, belonging, and mattering. When you're at Starbucks in line, listen to people's conversations. You'll hear what people are craving. Okay, you'll hear what people's meta programs are. Start to look at ads. Start to look at ads. Madison Avenue has been in the advertising industry has been using this stuff for a long time. Okay? Start to look at what makes you move, what makes you take action. It's very interesting. Okay? A lot of our concepts about how long things should take are totally wrong. One of the things that we always do is compress sales cycles. Sales take this long, that's dumb. Why? If we give them the same as, we can reduce it by 50%. Lifetime value is this, but if we do more same as, it can be that. I mean, you know, we have to use these tools because it's just a lot of other work otherwise. It goes faster. It's front loaded. All right, so we want to keep the brain in the smart state focused on same as. Oh, they're the same as me. I can subconsciously go forward with them, okay? We want to make sure that we use safety, belonging, and mattering to build trust, right? We want to make sure that we use meta programs. We want to make sure that we're connecting deeply with people at a subconscious level. We want to get that reach, act, convert, engage to close more sales faster. Okay, so here's what you guys should do next. Um, I'll send you the storytelling resource. Any other resources that you need? Where else do you want? When you want influence with your people, what's the most important thing that you want? Do you need to get influence to increase accountability? What's the end game? What will having that do for you? Those of you who wanted more influence internally, what did you want to get from it? What would it get you? What would it get you? Matter. Um, it would get you what? Mattering? Right. You feel like you matter more because you can deliver on your goals. 
are you guys, yeah, yeah, are you, how, how, how um, solid is your appreciation? The appreciation, the acknowledgement, the recognition that you do internally. Raise your hand if you feel like your company does a really good job of appreciating and acknowledging people. Okay, I'm gonna send you a resource. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna send you. Okay, you guys need to have this, okay? Because when you do this better inside, it's, it zooms outside. Growth, appreciation, measurement, engagement, okay? So there's a template for creating a game plan. Okay, good. Here's the thing. Whatever result we want to get outside, we have to create inside first. We are HR, we don't really call it HR. In, in California, we call it talent, talent optimization, okay? We don't have rewards and consequences. We have celebrations and conversations, okay? Doesn't matter, it works. <laughs> There's a lot of kumbaya, but there's also a lot of profit, you know? So um, I'll send you this so you can actually look at your internal uh, culture. So yay, so determine your neuromarketing success metrics. What do you want? Do you want like LexisNexis? Do you want 215% involvement, in increase in your community? You know, do you want what the other guys want? 300% increase on their open rates, click-throughs, um, calls to action? You know, do you want, so Citrix came to us, the go-to meeting guys. We had 5,000 people sign up for a webinar. We had 2,300 come. We had 912 take the call to action. What are the numbers that you want? Figure the numbers out. Figure the numbers out, okay? Because then you can actually design the right campaign, okay? Review the marketer's opportunity, that little slide up there, okay? Omnichannel approach. Oh, I should, do you guys want the PowerPoint? Okay, I'll send you a PDF of it. It's all going to be PDF because then it's, it's skinny. Have a lunch and learn, you know? Have a lunch and learn at your company. You know, sit down with your guys, talk about this. Determine the metaprogram profiles of your folks. Determine the safety, belonging, mattering triggers, okay? The three brain messages for your clients. Are you touching it? Are you letting their, their reptilian, reptilian brain feel safe? Are you getting them emotionally engaged? Are you then satisfying their intellect so that they can then stick their credit card down? Because the intellect will kill at the end. The vast majority of the decision is made by the reptilian and mammalian but if the intellect gets any red flags, boom, there goes your sale. So you have to talk to it too, okay? All right, good. Rework the messages, you know, based on number three above. Okay, if you need to change whatever messages you have out there, look at them carefully now. Change them, okay? Do some split testing. What a lot of our clients do is when we rework their messages with them, they do a little baby split test to a little segment. They do A-B testing. We see what works best. We do A-B testing within each profile. Then we roll it out to the populace, okay? Good and then reach out to me if you need any help. Yay, thank you for being here today. Everybody good? Let's clap for each other. <laughs> good work. I know they're gonna feed us too, which is awesome. Leave your cards up here, I'll send you treats and anything else I figure out.